What if I told you today that Nintendo is doing something completely unprecedented? I mean, unprecedented for a multitude of reasons, but the maybe the biggest is because Nintendo's never done this before. I guess that's the definition of unprecedented, right? Before that, though, we do have a look at a couple other pieces of news as well. I want to thank you guys for joining us for today's little news cycle on the Nintendo Switch and things happening around Nintendo. We do have a game that leaked today as well, so we get to talk about that. It's going to be a pretty nice show. Before we jump into it, I want to thank you guys for being here. Remind you to like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our road to 80,000 subscribers. I also want to thank, well, one of the sponsors of the channel here. E Win Racing. You guys should go check out their chairs and products down in the description below. You can get 20% off using code Nintendo Prime. Get your office chairs or desks just in time for the holiday season. Our first story today deals with Nintendo World, in particular Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios that is supposed to open next year in Orlando. And hey, we have apparently what looks like, you can call it a rumor because it's not confirmed, but we apparently have the map or the overall layout of this thing visible here. And as you're seeing here, you can kind of get a good idea of how things are going to be laid out. You can kind of see Bowser's Castle with the Mario Kart ride up there to the right. Then you got like a desert area right below that. You have obviously uh, Peach's Castle and all that sitting there right at the forefront. You have a snow area out in the top left. You have the Yoshi Hills or whatever they're going to call that uh, dead center. And then just some other sort of general zone there to the left and right. A gazebo as well, whatever for whatever that's worth. So obviously this is just a generalized layout. There'll be various shops and vendors and other things going on all throughout this adventure. And obviously when you look at this, it, it, it sort of looks a bit small, but this isn't to scale, of course. It's going to be big enough to fit thousands and thousands and thousands of people in there. So, and we have no idea, obviously, what's inside things. Like you see, you know, warp pipes that go underneath the hills and uh, like that's how you, the entrances into the various areas or there'll be even more things going on. So look, I think it looks good. I think it looks fine. It's a slightly altered layout compared to the one that was built in Japan, but I think you're going to find that the layouts are going to be kind of altered and unique at each different location. I don't know uh, where the area is here where you're going to be able to go into an expansion because we do know there's like a Donkey Kong expansion going up in Japan and I presume they're going to have expansions at other parks as well. But still, it's a nice little look, a nice little tease for what we'll be able to enjoy next year here in the United States. I have no idea if I'm going to make it there. It does open up right around the time of the Mario movies release. So could be a really cool dual thing to do. Mario movie release plus go to Super Nintendo World if you happen to be down in the Orlando area. So, hey, pretty cool. And I'm sure uh, our good pal Mike Odyssey, <laughs> I know he's planning to get some drone footage and stuff for you guys. So he'll probably have some really cool coverage of this before it even goes up over at his channel. So you should go check that out. So our next story deals with a game that seems to have leaked for Nintendo Switch. Remind me if you've heard this before. Borderlands 3 has been rated by the Peggy board for Nintendo Switch Peggy 18. Now look, Borderlands 3 was actually rated by Peggy last year, and then the rating was taken down and deemed a mistake. Now that was only for the director's cut of the game, which would have been a little weird if it was only that version since not all content is in the director's cut. So it's a little strange, and maybe that's why they took it down, because the rating this time around includes all versions and all content. So this kind of seems like whatever Borderlands 3 games coming to Switch will just sort of have everything. So that's going to be really cool. No idea when this is coming out. It's not announced at this point. Some people are thinking this could be an announcement that happens at the Game Awards, which it very well could be. But this is pretty cool. It could also be something that doesn't get teased until the next Nintendo Direct. Either way, uh, this happens sometimes, and when it hits the ratings board, it's probably coming out sometime in the next six months. So I guess we'll just have to sit on our butt cheeks and, and wait for an official announcement. So our last story here is a little interesting because it's about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I, look, we could talk about sales, right? Another 500k sales in Japan, another 100,000 Nintendo Switches sold, yada, yada, yada. That's obviously good. It's selling very, really well. And it's almost surpassed Splatoon 3's total sales. However, obviously we saw a pretty big dip this week. We don't know what week three's dip's going to be, week four dip's going to be. It could get to the point that Splatoon 3 ends up jumping back ahead of it. But we're not here to actually talk about the sales of the game until we get I don't know, some bigger number updates, because right now we don't really have anything besides the 10 million launch number. But we're going to talk about something Nintendo admitted to and did that is unprecedented for them for this particular type of thing. 
Nintendo apologizing isn't new, right? Satoru Iwata back in the day used to apologize all the time for some of the repeated mistakes Nintendo would make, whether it was release slate related. Usually it was related to the release slate, but it could have been other things as well. And the thing is, we've never actually seen Nintendo apologize for the state of a game they publish at launch. Because generally speaking, when Nintendo publishes a game on their platforms, it runs pretty well. There isn't really any major issues. Even when Breath of the Wild came out, they didn't apologize for the frame rate issues because the frame rate issues only existed in two areas of the game, and this was a massive open world game. So what are they apologizing for? It works as intended for a vast majority of the game. So it wasn't a problem. Well, enter Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which has a number of graphical and performance issues. And look, it's kind of embarrassing. And it seems that Nintendo's not very happy about it. So they announced a new patch for the game. It dropped today. It does, it does enable season one of ranked play, which is just in time for some of the official Pokemon competitive stuff that begins tomorrow. They also patched music issues with the Elite Four. And then in, you know, quotes here, other bugs. You know, they don't spe specify what these bugs are, but they're probably bugs related to competitive play. Like there's a bug out there that gives you like instant one hit kills of other people's Pokemon. That's clearly going to be something that's going to be a problem in competitive play. So they probably patched up bugs related to that since the official league begins tomorrow. Now, what's interesting though, is when you click on to the check out more of this update and you see a little paragraph they put at the bottom of the 1.1.0 patch notes. And I gotta say, Nintendo might be pretty pissed off at the Pokemon Company and Game Freak based on the wording here, or at least Nintendo of America is pretty upset. Here's what it says at the bottom of the update. We are aware that players may encounter issues that affect the game's performance. Our goal is to always give players a positive experience with our games, and we apologize for the inconvenience apologize we take the feedback from players seriously and are working on improvements to the game so they are trying to fix it but what's interesting is them apologizing and saying we're taking this feedback seriously now this comes from nintendo america if you actually check the patch notes in japan there's a very similar message there at first when i first saw this i thought it was just nintendo of america just being upset because their call centers are being berated over this game their, their support centers but it turns out that this sort of messaging also exists in the Japan patch notes as well, meaning that this is obviously coming up from the higher up people at Nintendo. Nintendo is not happy that there are this many issues with this game causing so much stress, so much animosity, and so much negativity around Nintendo during the holiday season. The sales can be incredible, and Nintendo's going to reap the benefit of those sales. It doesn't mean they think it's okay for the games to release in the state they did, and when Nintendo's publicly issuing apologies on behalf of the Pokemon Company and Game Freak, can you only imagine what's happening behind the scenes? Can you imagine the meetings that have happened since this game came out? Can you imagine the sternness coming from Nintendo going, you are negatively affecting our reputation. People are running around saying our platform can't handle this game when it's your problem. Should have delayed it. Should have let us quality test it. Should have asked us for help to get this game. Ooh, I'm, I'm just spitballing the, the kind of conversations that could be happening behind the scenes. Nintendo never issues public apologies like this unless it's really bad. And it is pretty bad. And Nintendo isn't just sweeping it under the rug. I thought Nintendo wouldn't even bother to apologize or even address it. And just, here's the patch notes. Here's more patch notes. Here's more patch notes. I didn't think they would ever specifically come out and say, we're taking your feedback seriously. We know that there's problems and we're sorry about that. Like Nintendo doing this is unprecedented. They've never had to do this before because games have never released from them in this bad of a state. People have compared this to the Cyberpunk 2077 situation. And it's, you know, honestly, a little bit similar. Both games are unfinished products. And Frankly, it is embarrassing. I've said it's embarrassing. And Nintendo themselves must feel the most embarrassed because it's their name on those boxes. It's their exclusive game. It's an IP they own. And they're just not going to be happy with the backlash. So uh, kudos to Nintendo for at least apologizing and admitting that this is not okay. And hey, 
maybe this is the, uh, the, the kind of kick in the pants the Pokemon Company and Game Freak needs to make sure this never happens again. Frankly, Nintendo is probably one of only two companies involved with this that can change the trajectory of future Pokemon games to allow time to make them correctly, right? It's the Pokemon company who manages the overall IP and all of the engrossing things, which includes the games, the cards, the toy line, the anime, etc. And then there's Nintendo who actually owns the trademark on it and has the exclusivity rights due to those trademark rights. And they also own part of Game Freak and the Pokemon company, right? It's all a joint venture. Look, Nintendo is also one of the big players that could be like, mm, 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 we're not doing this again. We need to look at your game before it comes out. Uh, I don't know that that's what's going to happen in the future, but Nintendo is definitely not going to want Pokemon hurting their reputation, hurting the Switch's reputation or whatever future platform they have. So Nintendo is addressing this themselves, which, I mean, that's probably out of all of this, the best outcome we could hope for at this time is Nintendo getting directly involved because that's when real change could happen is when the parent company of all of this is like, you know what? That actually wasn't acceptable and we can't believe we let you get away with releasing this. Anyways, folks, you let me know what you think about this all down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljans from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been a really fun show. Sorry it's posted a bit later today. It is what it is, right? Like, just got to get back on schedule. Got to get back on task. Hopefully we hit it hard tomorrow, heading into the weekend. All right, guys, catch you in that next video.